so we have our fuselage here and I think now is about the right time to install the electronics normally we'd leave it towards the end but um, with this small airframe it's actually easier for us to uh, to install it around about now one of the reasons being is that we have direct access to the platform here um, that the electronics are going to be sitting on the all-in-one receiver is going to be sitting right here um, of course we could actually uh, continue and put the wings on the undercarriage and we could wait until all of that is done uh, until installing um, but of course that just makes things more cumbersome there's more material more of the the model to move around so I think now would be a really good time and we can also obviously install the control rods at the at the same time so um, let us get the bits we need firstly we need one of our little um, servo tape sticky pads but it's obviously not going to be used for a servo it's for the receiver itself um, I've got my uh, receiver here which I've already opened I've actually had it out of the bag and I've connected it to my transmitter um, so that, uh, in fact, let's bring my transmitter up here. There we go, DX6. And I've actually, if I switch this on, hopefully you'll be able to see this on screen. <coughs> my little batteries here. So I've got this saved as a uh, pop, and I have. I go into the settings. I have uh, system setup. Yes, I have gone and assigned some channels. So I've had a bit of a, a, a mess around with that. And what I've done is, you can see here, um, the aileron I have um, reassigned to rudder. And then if you look all the way down to rudder, I have reassigned to aileron and what that means is that when I control the elevator and rudder it's all on this stick here uh, so the other way you can do this is by mixing channels so if you mix the aileron and rudder um, you can actually get the uh, uh, the the left right of the uh, aileron control here traditionally to also mimic the uh, the rudder as well so uh, and, and also you get rudder on this side too um, so that you can control them with both and uh, I quite like that actually but uh, so that's how I've got it set up so I'll take it back to main obviously on your transmitter it may be completely different because it might not be a spectrum or it could be a different spectrum um, so anyway let's just plug it in we just need to make sure that this all works before we stick it in there which uh, which does help so what I tend to do is plug it in and cycle things so as you can see my left right actually controls what is the rudder control these are normally used for ailerons if you've got ailerons on board but um, yeah so the left right and the up down there everything's moving nice and freely everything seems to be uh, working as it should do which is great uh, so um, we're pretty much ready to uh, to install this now let's just unplug it turn that off pop this away so there's our receiver um, and well, before we actually uh, go and put it in, we might as well, like we've done with everything else, do a dry run. So, as you can see, the area that we've got to put it in here is is fairly small. Um, it only just about accommodates it. Um, and uh, you can see the, the two U's uh, within the bulkhead there where the, uh, the uh, rudder and elevator controls will come through. So... If we put this in here now, the aerial tends to get in the way of it being inserted. So we're just going to pop the aerial up slightly like that. We pop that in there. So what we really want with the position on this 
is for it to be the, the back of the receiver to be right up against that uh, bulkhead in there. And the aerial comes straight up like so. So that's where we want it, uh, want it sitting. Now, if you take a look forward, you'll notice that you can't actually see the pins on the connector for the motor. So what we're going to have to do, and you have to be pretty careful about this, you don't want to snap it, is you want to just push, bring that up a little bit closer, you need to push that connector just so that it angles upwards, like so. Turn it that way, you can see how it's, uh, how it's gone. So obviously what we don't want to do is snap the connector itself, but we do want it pointing up. Make sure it doesn't foul with any of the uh, the gearing, and uh, that should be good. The other thing that we need to take note of is, um, obviously, what we've just bent up is the motor connector, and just behind the motor connector, you've got a, uh, a series of uh, electronic uh, components on the board um, that form part of the electronic speed controller. Now, what we want is to make sure that those keep as cool as possible. So when we put our double-sided tape over, we actually want to remove some, and uh, let me just get, there is my trusty, there we go, my trusty Sharpie marker. So what I can do is, um, I'm just, you'll notice that fortuitously, the width of the servo tape is around about the width of the, the board itself. So I'm just going to quickly mark a little square on the uh, protective tape, like so. And then I can use my scissors or knife to remove that and need that a little bit later. Um, so let's do that now. I'll just get my scissors. There we go. Get rid of that. Um, and the other thing that we need to do is uh, obviously trim it so that it doesn't overhang the uh, the back. There's about a, a probably a millimeter. Of, uh, of hangover there and the other thing that we do when we when we add this tape to the base of the uh, the receiver is we don't want to put any of this material forward of the back edge of the PCB uh, reason being that it can actually foul the uh, the larger gears on the on the servo so just need to keep that in mind when you're uh, when you're placing it on there as well. So I'm just going to remove. As I said a millimeter. It's actually about two millimeters from the back. Like so, and then let's just peel peel off just one of the sides. I'm going to place that on there, make sure I don't overshoot. There we go. Make sure your wire's twisted quite nicely as well. It keeps it nice and tidy, stops it from uh, fouling against the uh, the servo teeth as well so good so i'm going to go for one more dry run just to make sure the changes that i've made can come into effect now as for positioning left to right um, we need to scooch it over just a little bit to the left hand side because the servos are offset from the center, we obviously want each servo to 
almost line up with the uh, the, the scoops, the U's that we've got in that in this bulkhead here. You can see those U's just there and there. And obviously the wires are going to come through there. So we want uh, we want those servos to be able to easily um, have the wires, the control wires to the tail feathers attached to them without having to go through um, too many too many bends. So, so I think I've got that pretty well positioned. Let's just bring that a little bit closer so you can see. So see it's right up against that bulkhead. The aerial at the moment is poking straight up as you can see. Um, and we've got uh, some clearance at the front here so that I have access to the uh, connector uh, for the motor. So let's pull that out one last time. Peel off the backing paper and try to get it in that position we just had. Scooch it over to the left. Up against that back wall. Then we can it should probably just use something plastic, push it all down. Obviously, I can use my fingers and thumbs appropriately. There we go. So we now have our receiver installed into the fuselage. And um, the other thing I can do is just tuck the battery wire underneath the motor connector. And that helps it keep out of the way of those servos. There we go, so that's just tucked under as well. Let's just see, you can just see all of that there. How it sits on the front. Excellent. Right. So that's in. That's done. Now it's about connecting up the control rods. So in your parts bag, you should have two pieces of piano wire that have some shaping at the end of them. There we go. And they're very similar in shape, but the Z bend, which is the uh, the right angled bend at the end there, let's just move that out of the way so you can see. Um, on one of them, it's at a right angle to that U bend, and on the other, it is in line with it. So the one that's in line, um, that is for the uh, rudder. And the one that is kinked to one side, 90 degrees, uh, that's for the elevator. So, completely oversized for the job, as you can see. But uh, we have a, a one-size-fits-all policy at MicroAces, uh, especially when you've got some wire cutters. So... Near the decks. So to do what we're going to do now, we're going to need some uh, either some really good firm tweezers or uh, some some small sort of thin nose needle nose type pliers. We're going to need a sharpie, um, and we're also going to need some wire cutters. Now this is these have got wire cutters on, but I don't. They're not, uh, not really substantial enough, so I've actually just got a, another pair of uh, more substantial pliers um, that we can, uh, we can use for that task. Right, so let's go for the rudder first. So when we install it, that U, we want 
facing downwards like that. And the U itself actually allows for a little bit of physical adjustment should we need it. Uh, you can pinch it together or, or pull it apart um, to uh, increase or decrease the distance uh, or the, the length of the control rod itself. So now to get this, what we want to do is just pop that into the slot on the starboard side and then just run that through so it goes all the way through and out, you can see it coming out the front there. And then to get it into that uh, little hole in the uh, control horn, I actually grab hold of the control horn and because it's nice and flexible, I can bend it up slightly, introduce the Z bend to the hole and then just push it through. Now you might find that the first time is harder. <laughs> Too hard. So what I'm going to do now is just use the back of the other rod just to make sure that there's a clear passage through there and then we can give it another go so i'm actually holding on to that that u there which is pointing up towards me There we go. And the click as it went through. Excellent. So that we have full control of our rudder now, but obviously it's not hooked up. So on the receiver, rudder is right. Um, so we are going to actually push this over to the right hand side from the left. So there will be crossover uh, within the fuselage, but it doesn't cause a problem. So there are a couple of things we're going to do. I'm going to put, because we've got it coming in at such an angle, I'm going to put a little bend just before we get to those, those U's in the fuselage. So around about there. Now I'm going to mark that point with just a little black dot. So I know when I extract the control rod, I'll know where to bend it. And then whilst we're here, I'm going to pop a dot on where the wire comes up to the first hole on the servo arm. There we go. So hopefully you can see if I can get it to focus that I, I have actually put, you can see there's a little dot on that servo arm as well. And there's a, uh, a uh, black mark on the, uh, the wire itself. So that where that black dot is on the servo arm, that's where the first of three holes are. Well, they're actually, they're actually two usable holes in the servo arm, um, front and back. That's the, uh, the, 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 the most rearward, uh, if you're considering the direction being the fuselage. So those are my marks. And now I'll actually just extract the control rod back out. So I'm going to remove it from the control horn, bring it all the way out. And then for orientation, I'm just going to pop the, the aircraft like that. So I can, I know my U now should be facing down and it's coming in on this side as we've seen before. So I've got my first black mark just here. I'm just going to hold that, make sure my U-bend is downwards, and then just put in a small kink like so. It's, um, well, 
you can see how much it is. It's, it's not a great deal, maybe 10 degrees. And then I'm going to go to my other black mark, which is the important one. So this sets the length and make sure my U is facing downwards. And then pop in a bend just there. Now I'm going to increase that bend back on itself. So it's going to go through the 90. And then a little bit more. Hmm. So there you can see how much I've bent it back past the 90. And that creates our little hook. So I'm going to get my pliers now and, and around about probably seven or eight millimeters out from the uh, that bend. I'm just going to snip it off. There we go. So it needs a little bit of a twist. I uh, obviously lost the orientation when I was doing that. So that needs to bend down slightly. So I'm just giving it a, giving it a twist. So now we should actually be able to slot that in with that hook like so, and then feed it through. Might be a little more difficult this time with all of the stuff we've done to it. And then attach this back up. And we should have our control rod ready to pop into the uh, the hole that's in that servo arm. Now the way we do that is obviously need to um, bend this. If I bring this out here, we need to bend this so that that wire can actually be popped through there. I'm doing it above it at the moment, um, but if I drop down, then pop that through, there we go. You can now see that it's gone through The hole and it's just sitting there waiting to be controlled. Now seeing that there I think I might have cut it a little bit too long because it could when going back and forth impact on the little servo on the other side on the other the, the motor on the other side. So I might actually just have a little trim of that. So I'm going to pop it out again easy enough to do and I could possibly trim it here if I'm careful. I'm just going to take a few millimeters off if I can. There we go. I'll pop that back in place. I'm just going to move the aerial to the center so it's not impacting on the control rod. There we go. As you can see I've actually got a little bit of a kink over to the left so I might have I might have left that a little bit uh, a little bit short. So 
So we might have to expand it there, or we can also do it in the uh, in the software in the um, in the transmitter. So right, on to the elevator. So same process. In fact, you can see there's, there's a slight bend on this at the moment, so I'm just going to try and straighten that out as much as possible. And also have a slurp of tea. Oh, excuse me. It's looking a bit better. Okay, let's pop that in. So it's literally same process. It's coming through on the right side. It's good. So attach this to the control horn. It's a little easier. And this actually probably won't need to be kinked. Uh, so much just because of where the uh, the receivers sitting and the servos on the uh, on the receiver are sitting. Um, so all I need to do is just make a judgment as to where that wire is going to go through servo arm. So I'm going to go in. There we go. Pop it off the control arm, control horn, say. Drag it out. And then orient it as it would be on the aircraft with that U bend facing downwards. And then go to the mark. Let me pop that 90 plus in and then take off to about 7 mil. There we go. You can see that there. Keep hold of those wires, they're coming quite handy for all sorts of things, model making and also clearing glue nozzles. Pop that in. Get it over here. Go. Now, do exactly the same this side. Pop that into servo hole. Somebody welded it shut. Now there we go. Fantastic. Excellent. Once again, it looks like I've made that a little bit too short. <laughs> but uh, well, let's get the um, let's get the servo, the, the receiver, and transmitter plugged in. Make sure everything is working fine.
So we have rudder, we have elevator. Well, that's not so bad. I didn't have um, I didn't have everything centered, which is unlike me to forget that. So in centering them, they seem to certainly the elevator seems to be uh, uh, pretty good now. Um, the uh, rudder itself needs a little bit of trim, so we can either do that on the trim buttons, or we could go into sub trim and uh, and trim it there. Um, so let's do that. So travel, sub trim. Now is he going to do it on rudder or? I think it's going to do it on aileron, isn't it? Certainly not making any uh, any noises with rudder. So let's just go to aileron. There we go. That looks good. So, so now we have really good rudder movement, really good ele elevator movement. And it's all in the right direction. So, and that that's because it has been previously set up. So, if I go into reverse mode. So we've got elevator has been uh, has been reversed there so uh, we've got um, rudder in normal position aileron in normal position but uh, elevator has been uh, has been reversed so you may need to do that in uh, your transmitter as well but uh, apart from that we're all uh, all ready to go so that is how to install the electronics into the pub. As I stated before, um, you could do it a little bit later on, um, but having the access to the top here is really good for hooking things up and obviously marking things up as well. So um, up to you if you if you do it now or leave it till later, but as I said, it seems to be a good idea to, uh, to get it done uh, while everything is, uh, is nice and open and available.